Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to IG Petrochemicals Limited Q4 and FY24 earnings conference call. This conference call may contain forward-looking statements about the company which are based on the beliefs, opinions and expectations of the company as on of this day. These statements are not the guarantee of future performance and involve risk and uncertainties that are difficult to predict. As a reminder, all participants time will be in listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask question after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then 0 on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Pramod Bhandari, CFO of IG Petrochemicals Limited. Thank you and over to you sir. Thank you very much and good afternoon everybody. On the behalf of IG Petrochemical, we welcome everyone on this call. On this call, uh, we have an NGA or Investor Relations Advisor also. Unfortunately, Mr. Nikhil Dhanuka, our MD, could not participate today. I've been called due to some un- unforeseeable event. He has asked me to pass his regards to the stakeholder on the call. On the business performance, I hope everybody had an opportunity to go through our financial business and investor presentation. which has been uploaded on the stock exchange as well as the company's website we will give you a quick overview of the recent development in the industry and how igpl is moving forward post that we like to have a lead to lead session in terms of the through operational financial highlights in the financial year 2024 the prices of the major bulk and the petrochemicals has remained in the pressure aggravated by the ongoing geopolitical crisis Slow recovery in the major economy and red sea crisis, which has extended to overall trade costs. Additional inventory stockpile has further pressured the price of major petrochemical derivatives and key food stocks. As a result, the growth momentum of the numerous chemical companies has been impeded throughout the year. Demand from the end user market has been mixed. The demand for the plastic and polymer plants remains subdued, while the UPR and pigment segment has recovered well. <coughs> in the later part of fy24 despite multiple headwinds we are committed to say that we have closed the financial year with a revenue of around 2130 crore do due to the price and the spread volatility our profitability was impacted for full financial year chemical and other is our primary product we have not only pioneered it in india but also imprinted our leadership position in print foundation We produce metallic hydrides, metallic hydrides, and benzoic acids, as well as the advanced plasticizer of BP at our Tawada plant in Mumbai, near to Maharashtra. We are delighted to say that our PFI unit has successfully completed in last quarter. Post the expansion, our capacity of ten men and BA has been expanded respectively. Based on the current price, we are expected to have an incremental revenue of 500 crore from PFI for next financial year. There are very few manufacturers globally that supply high-quality thallic. IGPL is the largest producer in India and second largest in the world. It is important to note that thallic underwear is a key raw material. It is consumed by a wide range of the industry. We foresee the demand of this product to grow at a new rate of mid-digit between 5 to 7 percent. We have sufficient capability to serve and capture the market, driven by its versatile application as well as uh, raw material intended for many downstream chemical users. As highlighted earlier, highlighted earlier, we are actively pursuing to add new downstream products with wide range of plasticizers to our product portfolio. We plan to invest approximately 165 crore, excluding the GST, and expect this project to complete in next uh, around 18 months. Post receiving all necessary approvals, once the plasticizer facility is up, this project will consume around 30 to 35 thousand ton of metallic hydride, in essence more than 50 percent. Or 60% of thallic hydrides produced by PA1 PA5 unit, which we have recently started, will be used for the downstream plasticizer. The capital consumption is expected to increase in FY26 and 27. On the operational highlight for the quarter, for the quarter ended, the total revenue, including the other income, is to that 563 crore, as against 699 crore. The sales for non-thallic business is to that 36 crore. Export contributed around 13% of overall thallic business. EBITDA is to that 36 crore with a margin of around 6.3 percent. Profit after tax at 9 crore for the quarter. For the full financial year, total revenue is to that 2,000 crore with a decline of 10 percent. The the 
The revenue from non-thalic business has contributed around 159 crore, and export contributed roughly 10% of total thalic generated business. EBITDA is today at 136 crore with a margin of 6.4%. Uh, EBITDA was impacted due to the lower spread between AX and PEG, which continue to remain between uh, 100 to 150, and due to decline in the prices, sharp decline in the prices of the malic enterprise. The net profit is stood for FI24 at 40 crore. Currently, the company boasts a robust balance sheet and maintaining a working capital cycle between 20 to 40 days, which is one of the best in the industry. We anticipate this expansion will generate healthy cash flow and further strengthen the complete position. As a part of diversification and diversification, we aim to expand our downstream diversity products to increase the presence in the Indian domestic market. The expansion is expected to improve our operating business and boost the profitability and potentially increase the revenue for non thalic business. Over the past two to three years, we have made some few strategic decisions to meet the rising demand of our product. These decisions are part of our holistic approach and strategy for providing better value proposition to our business partners and to become a well diversified chemical company. With this, I would like to conclude the presentation and open for question and answer. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Participants present on the audio bridge who wish to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question, you may press star and two. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Rahul Jain from Credence Wealth. Please go ahead. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. Yeah. Uh, yep. Samadhi, so, uh, with regards to the pricing scenario of both our product, Thalic and OX, and the spreads between two, how has it been in the quarter gone by? And given the current situation and environment, how do you perceive it to be in the next uh, two, three, four quarters? So, uh, for the quarter gone by, uh, Jan and Feb was a new quarter because it's continued from November, December, Jan, Feb. But we have seen the recovery in the start of March, which has been further improved in April onwards. So, we earlier with the margin has gone below $100, around $60 to $70. Now, it has come back again to between $150 to $160, $170. So, I think we have already made the bottom. Now, we are on a recovery path and we see gradually there is an improvement in the margin. So, are you saying the spread is currently around 150 because the previous quarter, Concord, we said it was around 100 to 120. Correct. That 100 to 120 has moved now to 150? That, so not for the quarter, but it has moved gradually from uh, March onward. Okay. And sir, with regards to our PFI, uh, how is the capacity ramp up happening? We started this plan somewhere in February. So, yeah. the initial additions, uh, the stability, whatever has. I think, I think uh, utilization and everything is fine. I think we will be able to achieve in current quarter the utilization of that plant and utilization will not be challenged. However, there are some things uh, in terms of the change in the catalyst and the government requirement. We need to take shut down on one or two units in the next one or two quarter. But for CFR, we will be able to reach at 90 to 95, 90 to 91%, which is the optimum capacity. So this year for this 53,000 ton plant, for FI25, can we expect a utilization of around 85-90%? Between 70 to 85. Haji, sorry? Between 70 to 85 percent. Between 70 to 85. And sir, uh, with regards to starting this plant, the overall cost of operation, uh, both uh, the fixed and the variable, the operating cost of thalic anhydride, uh, how is it moved from before starting of this plant and after starting of this plant? In conversion cost, which was around uh, $100, it has reduced by around $10 to $15 per ton. I'm talking about the conversion cost because the fixed cost has to be divided between all the five plants compared to four plants. However, in terms of the depreciation and in terms of the, the, the finance cost, because the debt which we have raised for this purpose will be reflected in the balance sheet and will started reflecting in the balance sheet in, in, in from 12 tab onwards. So typically, you will see the full reflection of that. The depreciation, which was 42 to 43 crore, now full year depreciation is around 60 crore. 
Typically, the finance cost was 67 crore. Now it will be between 9 to 10 crore quarterly and annualized 35 to 50 crore. So when we say conversion cost, it will be between the spread and before the EBITDA. Is that or, sorry before the depreciation and finance cost? Is that uh, uh, no fixed cost? When I'm saying conversion cost, what are the things required to convert the material? Remitting from final product. It doesn't include the fixed cost like uh, uh, rental, administration cost, and all that. Conversion cost like all the catalyst, uh, or energy cost, repair maintenance, which is which is incurred actually at the factory level. Sure. And sir, <coughs> sorry. So along with the fixed cost, we'll have another forty fifty dollars per ton of fixed cost to be added to the conversion of nineteen ninety five dollars. 100%. Okay, okay. Sure. I think in the next quarter result you will be able to see full reflection because the last quarter the PFI capitalization has started from 12th or 13th Feb onwards. Mm -hmm. And sir, with regards to the scenario, uh, how do you compare this cost versus our competitors both domestic and globally? I think for IGPL we are the, one of the lowest cost producers. Uh, not only because of the conversion cost, but also for the other like finance cost for a single size company of 2,500 crore revenue. Finance cost is also, if you benchmark it, is 50% of that. And uh, the total fixed cost, which all the plants are in a single location. So entire fixed cost is spreaded among the five plants. And manpower, more or less, except five to ten, is remain same. So in terms of the overall costing, we are the one of the lowest cost producers. And our retail maintenance cost is also one of the best in the industry. Because we have set up all the new plants based on the lubricant technology and general equipment. Okay, sure. So last one question on the global scenario on Thalic side. Uh, we have been reading reports uh, on two fronts. One is the naphthalene based uh, production since naphthalene prices have been going up. So typically some of the plants, uh, more so in Taiwan, have been facing issues in terms of their cost of production uh, that is on the naphthalene side. And on the other side, we are also hearing about closure of plants. So one of them being AU King Petrochemical that was supposed to close down in April. And also Mitsubishi Gas also has plans to shut down the thalic. So uh, can you call, give some more details about the kind of capacities getting closed? So basically, when the thalic price goes or margin goes below $100, we see a lot of guys in the international market where conversion cost is around 150. They are not able to sustain. However, some guys who are operating as naphthalene because the gap between naphthalene and the waste was widespread between 250 to $300. So a lot of guys who have a thalic plant based on naphthalene who are the marginal player. Whenever there is a gap increase, they started the production. Now because of the change in the naphthalene prices, the increase in that, that margin, uh, the production will reduce. Number second, generally these players are into the China side. And Chinese government, because of the pollution and all that, is, is, is harping very sharply on these guys because this creates a lot of pollution. Plus, it is not a technology efficient way of production of thalic. In fact, the Indian government is also looking at, at uh, setting up the standards to not to allow naphthalene based thalic to enter into India. But overall scenario, this is promising because now the Demand is also going up in the domestic market with all the sectors which we were catering uh, from the last quarter compared to last quarter, all the segments, paint, pigment, EPC, uh, every sector has shown or demonstrated a good growth in this current quarter, uh, last quarter, ended FI24. Sure. Thank you, sir. Uh, wish you all the best. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Pranav. Manhora from Robo Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, hi, hi, sir. Thank you for taking my question. Uh, so, first question is, uh, and what year can we expect to breach the three thousand crore uh, mark of revenue? And again, uh, what and when? Till when can we expect to reach fifteen percent of margin? That's my first question. So, revenue, I can tell you, but margin is all depend on the market. The revenue, I think we will be expected to complete the plastic as a project uh, between 2000, uh, September to December 2025, next year. So from 15 to 18 months from now, uh, which for plastic side is still normal basis, will add 900 crore revenue. 
but you need to reduce the thallic because thallic is what is internally consumed from existing plant to the plasticizer plant so net revenue will be 500 crore so today we have roughly 2100 to 200 450 to 500 is added because of pf fire and another 500 will take around 3000 to 3200 crore so for fy 26 27 full financial year you will see the revenue crossing 3000 crore so margin i think it's a it's a matter of the demand supply international market you can't control the margin sitting in india because india is less than 5% of overall market however whatever whatever is the international market margin i think because of the operating efficiency because of the uh, by product like nelly benzo gas and now down to into dp making around 100 dollar over and above the international market margin so, so Guidance okay. is always relative rather than the fixed because it's a link with the international market price. Sure, but uh, any guidance on maybe then just FY25? Uh, what are the margins looking like? So I am not like any guidance right now because we have just seen the recovery at, in the March month, which is spell now into the April and May. So let's look. I think it will be wrong to give the projections for 12 months. Wait for one or two quarters. We will have more clarity going forward. Okay, sure, sure. And uh, the next question is regarding uh, uh, debt guidance for you know next preferably next two to three years. Uh, what are we looking to repay and where, till when? Uh, overall, basically guidance on debt. So uh, right now we are lended zero, and because the the cost of funding has gone up slightly in some one rupee loan case. We intend to prepay around 50 crore rupee in next one or two months. So balance that average cost is around five and a half to six percent, and uh, we continue to maintain that healthy mix of debt and equity because if you are making seven and a half, seven seven and a half to eight percent in treasury, and your cost five and a half, it makes sense. Whenever the cost of debt crosses seven and a half to eight percent, we feel that it's the right time to prepay. Okay. Okay. Uh, and uh, one last question. So, uh, what are the plan spreads looking in uh, FY25 and 26? Uh, what are your you know, thoughts on it? We are talking about not 24-25. We are talking about 25-26. Uh, uh, overall, yeah, FY25, 24-25, and 25-26 as well. So, I think I will not give you any guidance for the margin, but in general, if you look at the market for last 10 years, the margin moved between 100 to 400 dollars. so it is advisable not to look at the quarterly margin look at the average of 5 year which generally coming at around around 150 to 200 dollars so last 10 year average is say it is between 150 to 200 dollars right and and uh, we are looking to uh, maintain that as well right for next 1 uh, to 2 years minimum subject to the market at least we are okay. if, if market is 100 we will be have between 200 to 220 if market is 200 we will be have between 300 to 320 got margin on top Okay, okay, okay. Got it, sir. I'll I'll get back. Hundred dollar over the number of the market. Thanks, thanks a lot. I'll get back in you. Yeah. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Aditya Kandelwal from Securities Investment Management Company. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah. Hi, sir. Uh, thanks for the opportunity, sir. Uh, if I have to understand the total wealth capacity of Kandelwal Kandelwal. How much would be from uh, naturally, and how much would be from water oxygen? So typically, seventy-five to eighty percent capacity is, is based on the oxygen, and around ten to fifteen percent, majorly in China, is based on naphthalene. Naphthalene is, is not naphtha, which generally people uh, correlate it. It is naphthalene is the byproduct of the steel plants. It is not naphtha; it is naphthalene, which is the byproduct of steel, and this. Naphthalene is used to produce, and there is a wide gap between OX and naphthalene. This is not the efficient technology. Plus, it is more polluted, and the conversion cost is much higher than the OX conversion to thallic. And this, so you mentioned that there have been shutdown capacities, or uh, which are manufacturing from naphtha based. But have you seen shutdown capacities uh, which are based on oxygen? There are some. Because it needs to be looked at not as an individual plan, but overall capacity as a part of global strategy. If global players look at their refined become petrochemical, and they evaluate and decide whether we need to run it or not. Some of the players 
taken the temporary shut down some of the players decided to permanently shut till there is an improvement in the market it all depends but now only we have seen that now the lot of players are planning to close it again once because of pollution and second the prices of the national net go up okay and sir uh, in terms of sort of different domestic scenarios uh, what would be our capacity currently after this expansion of thalik united uh we have a capacity we will have we already had a capacity of 2 lakh 25000 ton of thalik around 8000 to 8500 ton of malic and dry and now 1000 to 1200 ton of benzoic acid and 8400 ton of dep and uh, what would be the capacity of our competitor and uh, another customer which are backward integrated into manufacturing thalik so in total new new customer will enter into the market uh, i understand the capacity is around 90000 ton and uh, what thrimbal i think they have between 120 to 130 they have not published any other capacity but i understand 120 to 130 is their capacity right now okay so the domestic capacity would be around 6 lakh tons for india right not exactly 230 and 275 Uh, around roughly 50 to 60. Yeah, and what will be the total domestic consumption currently in India for thalik? It's between 500 to 550. 500 to 550. And uh, what is the percentage of imports that generally happen? Because we saw a dip in imports during COVID. Typically, typically import earlier was around 10 to 12 thousand per month. But one player who was downstream who has done the backward integration. So he stopped the import. Now the import is around three to four thousand ton per month, which is half from earlier import. Because once you start your own facility, you don't need to import it. Okay, and sir, uh, generally the imports, the spreads which the imported players make and what we make, is there a big difference? Or, or no, the there is no, there is no difference. Generally, the smaller players or the medium players can't import because the logistic cost. Typically, is very high. So when you are importing, you need to import in a big quantity. So generally, imports are not done by any small player or medium player. Big players used to do. Right now, also, it is coming from some China, Taiwan, Korea, but very small quantity. Now, three thousand to four thousand ton. But we also export around fifteen to fifteen percent of our product. So it creates a big drain in the market. Okay. Answer this. One question. So, with so much capacity coming in for Thailand and domestic markets, do you foresee a situation that the spreads would remain, you know, lower than usual because of so much capacity coming in and the demand not meeting with the supply? So, do you have a situation that? Hello. I understand. First, I understand that. First, you need to understand that the margin is not the the link with the demand, supply, and capacity. Just like. These are gasol and gasoline. The margin is twenty dollar or thirty dollar. Whether the rent produced higher, lower will make any difference to the international market margin? No, because in overall it's going to be less than three percent of total capacity. Similarly, in thalik also the margin is determined by the international market price. You may have a competition. You can always say that okay, the over the international market margin, if there is a competition, we we'll make eighty dollar or hundred dollar, hundred and twenty dollar or above the market margin. Understood, sir. Understood. And sir, uh, what was the capacity to digestion for us this year? Are we really operating at hundred percent to digestion? We are operating roughly eighty-five to ninety percent of our units, but some of the units we need to take every year the sundown for change in the catalyst or the general repair and maintenance, and sometimes we need to take the sundown for the boiler inspection because there is a regulation where we need to have an inspection every three years for the boiler. So based on that, every year one or two quarter we take the shutdown for one unit for inspection, normal routine, uh, repair maintenance, as well as cleaning in the catalyst. Understood, sir. Understood. Thank you, sir, for answering the questions. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Nirav Jimodia from Envel Research. Please go ahead. Yes, sir. Thanks for the opportunity. I have two questions. So, so first on the plasticizer side, side like we have been putting up a capacity of DOP, DNP, we already have DEP. So if you can just help us, uh, the application wise, where these products would be going, who are the competitors or the other producers of the same product in India, as well as uh, whether the margins would be better than our existing uh, DEP, 
so some some sense on that would be very helpful so basically the the plastic as a reason less capital intensive project where we spend about 60 to 170 crore while the revenue will be 900 crore so when you look at the overall margin of the revenue it is at to 7% but when you look at of 900 crore part to 7% of the feedback period is less than 3 years the capital turnover ratio in the plastic sector is very high by spending 170 crore you are getting 900 crore revenue which is more than 5000 and up times and that is one uh, apart from the IGP which is setting up the plastic sector project there is type of plastic sector there are other players bigger players in the market like KLJ and Pile but IGPL will be the third largest player after setting up the capacity we are planning to set up uh, some generalized plastic sizes like BOP and then some specialized plastic sizes so overall when you look at margin it ranges between 5 to 10% but we look at from the payback period point of view or uh, point of view which is very lucrative because your revenue multiple compared to the capex is 5 times plus and in terms of demand i think india is self sufficient the demand is going between 7 to 8% for the plastic sizes and it directly linked to the indian economic growth If India continues to grow at 7 to 8 percent, it has generally one is to one of the uh, correlation. So it continues to grow, and it has multiple uses and applications. Everywhere which you see the plastics, whether the playgrounds, the the roads, infrastructure, construction, pipeline, rubber, everywhere different different plastic sizes are being used. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Aditya Ketan from Smith Institutional Equities. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you, sir, for the opportunity. Uh, so, first question, uh, as we all, uh, uh, as it was rightly mentioned, that there are some capacities globally which are getting shut down in March and April, which has led to like a spread improvement. So, this spread improvement is based on this. Uh, so, this phenomena or the demand itself in in the system has gone up. It's a must be once the margin go down, some of the cap. capacity which are marginal which are the conversion cost higher than the uh, higher than the margin uh, then they tend to shut down number second when they shut down then it create a equilibrium in the market and when the demand come up when they see that uh, there is not much supply available then automatically gradually you see the improvement this is a typical cycle for all type of commodities as well as chemicals if the margins are too low so they will shut down then demand will go up over the period of time and you see the gradual improvement in the market but sir what if this capacity is so they uh, so now the global spread has moved up so what if this capacity is now restart uh, so can we assume that the spread uh, uh, could remain constant or there is a risk again it I can think, go down i think the overall demand has impacted because of geopolitical issue uh, because of the, the russia ukraine war and other geopolitical issues and the efficiency of the gas uh, in the german market because a lot of customers to whom we are selling our products they sell to uh, europe now we have seen like big banks are used to sell 40 50 percent product in europe we have seen uh, dumping the demand for probably first or second quarter now we have seen they have again come back to 80 to 85 percent of capacity and we expect demand to continue to remain robust from european market and the us markets got it Uh, sir, on to the capacity expansion. So net revenue addition you mentioned that is around thousand crore. Sir, if you can recalibrate how this thousand crore figure will be added to the top line. So, uh, it will be around <coughs> it will be around four fifty of selling, around fifty crore of selling. Then there is a fee. Okay. And nine hundred crore will be the very type of plus size. But you need to reduce four hundred crore of selling, which will be used. So net net plastic sale will be 500 crore, 450 crore will be sale, and 50 crore will be the bundle that is and malik and trade. So for malik and trade, you said it would be 100 to 150 crore. It's a, it's a 50 crore, 400. I'm talking about incremental. Right now the capacity is around 800. Today the malik and trade prices are again 20 percent lower than sale. So overall realization is lower. Typically, historically, it is 20 percent higher than sell. If only there is an improvement in the money prices uh, based on the historical benchmark, our EBITDA will go up by 25 to 30 crore. Got it. And sir, so this 30 to 30, uh, so this figure of 35 k tons pan consumption, uh, 
so how much is the ratio like how, at peak utilization we are expecting uh, so 35 k tons of pan will be consumed at if we are operating at full capacity of 75000 tons so typically 32 to 33 is the consumption of thalic but it depends upon what combination we are using dp has a different ratio bimp has a different ratio i am telling you the weighted average 32 to 35% okay sir thank you thank you the next question is from the line of munzil shah from antique stock broking please go ahead Uh, thanks for this opportunity i have a couple of questions one is so, so sourcing of your raw material or those highly so at full capacity you know from where are you sourcing this uh, raw material uh, typically we typically we source around uh, 50 to 60000 tons of rice and around 5 to 6000 tons we are importing in the international market and and what is the scenario sir for this all those island since you know there will be further capacity coming up in india so do we have enough supply of ordo xylin or you know the dependence on import will increase i think uh, right now the capacity which they are operating it will be sufficient for the existing player but if you are adding a new plant you need to import it because there is no new capacity has been added although some spare capacity they have but it depend upon when they will start since the time they start of its year call ultimately beyond that in general also we are importing typically 3 to 5000 per uh, month so now you need to look at that if there is a further requirement you need to import it and it is really easily available in the international market and and any any of the ordo xylin capacities are coming up globally sir in global market uh, there is no separate ordo xylin capacity or the bigger player who has a refinery from petrochemical they are producing the ordo xylin So also that is not expendable on capacity is part of refinery and petrochemical complex sure i understand but is the within that petrochemical cycle would ortho xylin also be produced more i just wanted to understand that i mean right now sufficient quantity of ortho xylin is available there is a way through which we can increase the ratio of ortho xylin because the the mixed xylin converted from the nafta go into para xylin and ortho xylin if there is a demand enhancement so somebody will put the refinery we don't have right now the ps and os unit they can set up the unit as a part of the petrochemical crew complex and produce os and ps os is around 15 to 20% and ps is around 70 to 75% when you set up your plant as a part of the mixed xylene conversion into ps and os and secondly sir i wanted uh, some updates on this user industry so currently what is mm-hmm. paint and non paint uh, for uh, thalic so paint is roughly uh, 10 to 15% or sometimes 20% uh, cpc is around 15 to 20% so paint cpc and plastics are put together is 50 to 60% balance come into the uh, the bp specialty utr which comprises around 20 to 25% So paint is only 10-15 percent right now. 15-15 percent. It's moved between 15 to 20. Depend upon the season. Sure. In the Diwali season, when there is pre-Diwali season, like uh, say April, May, June, paint has a good demand because there is a process of production of paint which is used near to the Diwali. And so CPC, no. CPC, and the plasticizer have a demand throughout the year. Especially, they also have a demand in the second half of the year. And two more questions, sir. One is with regards to suppose if we have surplus capacity in the domestic market, maybe one two years down the line, mm-hmm. what is the export market that you are looking at, like and the margin? We, we are typically export around around to ten, historically twenty percent, but right now ten to fifteen percent we export, depend upon and generally the target area of the export is the Middle East. Sure. Sometimes Africa. Is it then that in general eighty percent is Middle East, balance twenty percent is other region. Okay, and the margins in exports case? I think you can't extend or calculate the margin because you get the duty drawback, you get the the export fulfillment and the EPCG. So there are a lot of things. There are a lot of things you need to calculate, but generally it is slightly lower, or you can say benchmark against the domestic market. Sure. Sir. And last question is, sir, outlook on malic anhydride because I I believe currently it's in losses. 
so you know what would be the outlook on malic anhydride going so for us we are not making any losses in the malic anhydride malic anhydride we are producing from wash water so whatever is the revenue they get for us so okay. if somebody is producing it from uh, and butane then of course because the, the the cost of the butane is very high and the price of the malic anhydride has gone down 20% below the thalic which is not the case historically so i think we are looking at 25 onwards there will be improvement into the malic price okay thanks a lot sir thank you ladies and gentlemen in order to ensure that the management is able to address questions from all the participants in the conference please limit your question to <coughs> super participants should you have a follow up question we would request you to rejoin the queue the next question is from the line of madhur rathi from counter cyclic investments please go ahead hi uh, thank you for the opportunity sir sure, uh, sorry to interrupt you sir may i request you to please use your handset yes i know all the is now all was better right now no sir can you come near to the mic and speak please hello yeah yes sir, now it's yeah. so uh, so currently as the price uh, as the spreads are around 150 to 170 and we have an advantage of uh, being a uh, low cost producer and a uh, 80 to 100 dollar advantage so, so does this mean that our spread for ig petro are near 250 kind of range so the very repeat your question sir so i uh, the current uh, uh, spread of uh, uh, thalic and ox ox are near 150 to 170 as you mentioned And we are the lowest cost producer with a hundred dollar advantage. So, so does this mean that our uh, spreads are around two fifty odd uh, dollars? No. Now, uh, whatever is the market margin, because of operating efficiency in the Mali, we are making roughly hundred dollar or above the market margin. If margin is say one fifty, we will be making around two fifty to two sixty dollars. And so the current margins are around 150 to 170, right? The current margin of market is between 150 to 170. Okay. Uh, uh, and so uh, next question would be, sir, the Malik uh, Chinese were going into uh, ban of the single-use plastic, and the demand was going to come uh, very strong. So we have already seen some kinds of green shoot in this uh, segment. Uh, Right now, uh, Chinese has set up a lot of capacity of malic energy uh, in view of conversion of malic into uh, BDA to PBA and PBT. But this this whole more production of PBA and PBT, which is used for the single uh, use plastics, then so they have postponed it to January 25. So we expect margin of malic to improve post January 2025 onwards. Okay, so so this uh, uh, the way Chinese has set up. they are not producing thalic and the byproduct malic is getting uh, sold into the market they are producing it through a different route right correct okay uh, that's it sir thank you and all the best thank you the next question is from the line of akshay kothari from jhp securities please go ahead sir thanks for the opportunity uh, sorry to interrupt you sir may i request you to please use your handset No, sir. Your voice is very less. Can you come here to the mic and speak, please? Well, now. Yeah. Now it's clear. Yeah. yeah. So I was just going through one of the reports by SNAP Global. It reads out that uh, uh, the each regulation in the European Union are calling for gradual replacement of thalate-based plasticizers. So. उसमें Like pigment, PVC, and all that. Having said that, in the new plant which we are setting up, we have a flexibility to not only produce BOT but also BOTP, which is a non-thalic plastic. 
So we have planned our plan in such a way where we have flexibility to produce both phallic and non phallic based plastic bags. That is on the uh, plasticizer front, which is, I think, uh, not a very big problem because India, Indian plasticizer demand is growing. But I am talking in terms of phallic as an end uh, consumption for plasticizers. So uh, is it getting greater? No, not right now because in India, the plasticizer industry takes 10 to 15 percent of, of the phallic. Otherwise, phallic goes into play, plasticizer, PVC, pigment. Especially chemical, agrochemical, photofilms, UPR. It is used in more than 22 industries. Plasticizer is one of the industries. And all the industries, uh, including the paint, plasticizer, pigment, PVC, CPC, everybody is growing at 8 to 10 percent. We don't see a big challenge. Of course, there are some uh, European countries which are not using plasticizer based on talent. But in India, I think it will take away 15 to 20 years. And we, at our new plant which we are setting up, we have a flexibility of to use both thalic based and non thalic based, produce non thalic and thalic based uh, That's it from my side. Thanks a lot and all the best. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Pradeep Rawat from Yogya Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, good evening, sir, and thank you for the opportunity. Uh, so my first question is regarding the OXO. I missed on the your consumption for orthoxylene. So can you repeat that? So we typically uh, that about the thalic production we need around 92 percent of the orthoxylene equivalent to. So okay. <clears throat> typically uh, 10 to 15 thousand ton we are buying from domestic market and balance 5 to 6 thousand ton is required. We import generally we import 3 thousand ton minimum. Maximum go up to 6 to 7 thousand ton every month. Okay, three thousand to six to seven thousand import every month. Yeah, yeah. So, what is the current uh, like capacity for OX right now in India? In India, the capacity is around three thirty to three forty, but at peak it can go up to four fifty. Uh, main plate capacity is operating at around three thirty. Yeah. So, given the increase in uh, capacity of thalic anhydride, so uh, it should definitely lead to higher consumption of OX. So, how are you planning to source OX? Uh, we we uh, have our model based on the 66% the of the thalic for domestic and 33% is from the import market. Okay, so uh, don't you see a uh, like crowding out effect uh, with respect to OX, like other uh, players also going uh, to uh, I think demand? I understand your point, but. Indian capacity is less than 4% of the global markets. So in the world, the capacity of the thalic is 6 million ton, operating at 4.4, 4.5. Similarly, OX capacity is also 5 million ton plus. So when, the, when you're talking about the global market, so a small, small quantity required by the Indian player doesn't make any dent or difference into the interest market. Yeah, great. So uh, uh, what is the delta between like uh, when we import and when we like uh, source it domestically, what is the price differential between if, that? If you do generally on some contract, then 15 to 25 dollar. And if you buy a spot, sometimes you get the cargo at, at lower than the domestic price, sometimes you get higher than the domestic price. So more of the things are based on how we are procuring, to whom we are procuring, and planning of a procurement. Okay, thank you. And uh, the second question was regarding like. In earlier calls, you mentioned that Greenfield plant similar to PA5 would uh, cost somewhere around 600 to 650 crore with a capacity of 53,000 ton per annum. So okay. our competitor has expanded a much larger capacity at a similar cost bracket. Uh, so I just wanted to know what advantage we got over them so, in terms of efficiency. Uh, we set up the plant. Uh, we set up the plant of 56,000 ton in typically 350 crore, less than 350 crore. Typically, yeah. if you set up at a green field, it will cost you 500 to 600 crore. I'm not aware about the cost, but typically, if you are setting up 90,000 ton, it has to be between 800 to 900 crore. Yeah, our, our competitor, Thirumalai Chemical, expanded uh, uh, similar, like 90,000 ton per annum for 550 crore, I think so. But I don't, I don't have a ready number with that. But you can refer it to the KLJ. 
they have set up at 8 million with crore of 90000 tons i think it is there in the environmental ministry or somewhere in the document oh. yeah 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 thank thank you thank you for that and thank you and all the best for your future endeavors thank you thank you thank you the next question is from the line of nirav dimodia from envil research please go ahead Okay, so thanks for the opportunity again. My line got disconnected. So I have two questions. So one, you mentioned that the spreads have recently trended to around 150, 170. Yeah. Uh, uh, would there be a reason of uh, the current container shortages or the freight rates going up because of the Red Sea disruptions? Because of which the material movement uh, had become slightly lesser as the transit time has gone higher, and because of which we have seen the strengthening of the spreads. Or it is because of the demand. gone up in the international market and we have seen such uh, a spread getting sent a couple of factors together i think first lot of plants uh, either taken a temporary or permanent shutdown because of that the demand has come up and no regular supply is there that is one of the reason for improvement and second it can't sustain at that level where it is uh, lower than your conversion cost right. so nobody will operate the plant if you are getting the cash losses number second the point is right because the freight cost typically has gone up between 50 60 to 70 percent when you are importing plus the time has also increased so it's a freight transportation uh, insurance forex uh, logistics packages everything put together you need to incur around 5 to 7 percent extra so because of that for any marginal player it is not advisable to import ultimately you are importing 5 or 10000 correct So, sir, so let's say if we are earning hundred dollars because of operational efficiency over and above those global margins, mm. uh, currently uh, is it fair to presume that we may be earning twenty to thirty dollars extra just because the freight advantage is coming in our way and those materials are not coming? That, that we can't calculate it today, but it is also applicable for us when we are exporting. So, it's a little like we are exporting the similar also the product. In in Middle East market, which is around ten percent of our total products. Correct. So currently, also we are exporting out, or uh, currently we are exporting around ten percent of our product overall for FI twenty four. Got it. Uh, so second question is uh, uh, last quarter our uh, sales volume were close to forty seven forty eight thousand tons. So have we seen any improvement because of the commissioning of PFI this quarter? And if yes, how much was the improvement in percentage terms? Typically, it is because the PF I was started in mid of Feb, so as such there is no direct impact. But in terms of the overall value, five to ten percent has changed compared to the last quarter. Correct. So possibly this quarter our production would have exceeded, or the sales would have exceeded fifty kg. Yeah, more or less. Yeah. Uh, so last bit from my side is uh, we generally have the. Uh, catalyst change every year because we have five to four plants and they recently commissioned. Probably they could have some time before they get touched. Uh, what is the annual cost we incur uh, for the catalyst, and uh, does that charge uh, at the PNL level, or we, do we capitalize that uh, amount? No. Uh, first, we incur between eight to ten crore rupees for the change in the catalyst for the energy cost. Which we incur, like uh, LSFO, which we are planning to now replace with the natural gas or the diesel, that is directly charged to the plant. Right? But the catalyst cost we spread over the period of three years. Over a period of three years. Three years, because catalyst life is three years. It will be wrong to take into PNL for one quarter. So every catalyst we spread over the period of three years or in three quarters. And balance cost, like energy and all, which which required to start up the project and all, is directly <coughs> charged to the plant. So let's say for FY24, how much of the cost would have passed through the PNL for catalyst? I think uh, four to five crore rupee. No, not catalyst for the energy. And the catalyst typically, when you look at all together, so seven to eight crore of the catalyst cost coming. Uh, uh, sometimes I think fifteen crore, sometimes twenty crore in a year it is coming into the PNL. Correct. So you mentioned that uh, once we switch to natural gas, uh, this uh, uh, FO cost won't be uh, coming on. So there will be some saving. So this cost of four to five crores, what we incur on an annual basis, uh, how much savings? It is only not. We incur on energy, which include LSFO, which include the diesel, which include the electricity, electricity duty, 
ये इनके अराउंड रफली टोटल इसमें आता था बट फोर्टी फाइव टू फिफ्टी करो और पोस्ट पी फाइव इट मे बी स्लाइडली हायर सो वेन वी कन्वर्ट इन टू नेचुरल गैस इट इज मिनिमम ट्वेंटी परसेंट ऑफ द टोल रफली फाइव टू फिफ्टी परसेंट सो फाइव टू सिक्स टोल पर मिनट Okay, so this would have a series of five to six crores on an annual basis for us. Yes, once it is fully operationalized on natural gas. And got it, sir. Got it. Thank you so much, sir, and uh, wish you all the best. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Aditya Ketan from Smith Institutional Equities. Please go ahead. Sir, thank you for the follow-up. Sir, in which fiscal in FI two five? Sir, in in which quarter we uh, we will be taking the catalyst change? Uh, as of now, we have not decided. We are evaluating. Maybe uh, for the first or second quarter. Not only for the it will be for change in the catalyst, but also it is for the purpose of overall repair maintenance because we take overall repair maintenance and catalyst change together. And sometimes it is also along with the the boiler because every three four years you need to get the boiler checked from the boiler inspector. Okay, so we should factor in slightly lower volumes in next quarter because of this catalyst change. I think rather than for the quarter for a year you need to assume the two plants are down for a year because quarter you can't predict which quarter. So, okay, sir. On to the plasticizer side, sir. What is the peak utilization level here? Whether it is ninety percent or ninety five? It will be between ninety to ninety five percent. There are some flexibility in that. It can go up to say eighty to eighty five, ninety also. But right now we are talking about the 75,000 ton. It can go up to one lakh ton. There is inherent flexibility inside the system. So first we are planning to set up that, and then gradually based on the requirement, we improve the de-bottling of the capacity. Okay, and this new plasticizers uh, of the DINP, DOTP. So as compared to our uh, so current basket of DEP, so the realization are higher, or it is all uh, it's a different. It's a different, different product, different, different level. So it has seven, eight type of plasticizer. DP has different margins. Weighted average, it is expected to generate five to seven percent of tax on revenue. Sir, sorry, uh, I missed your five, five to seven percent. Five to seven percent of tax on revenue. And if you are targeting revenue of nine hundred crore, we say around fifty crore to sixty crore tax on the investment of one sixty to one seventy crore. And it also depends upon the price at which you are transferring the thalic. If you are transferring the thalic at the market price, to whom you are selling the customer, then margin will be different. If you are if you are uh, transferring the thalic at the cost or say the lowest selling price, then the margin will be different. Got it. Okay. And sir, this plasticizer capacity, uh, this will be starting by 2026. 25 end is what we are targeting, September to December 25. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Madhur Rathi from Counter Cyclic Investments. Please go ahead. Sure. What is the, uh, the domestic demand for plasticizers in India? So plasticizers have typically demand of between three and half to four lakh ton. It may be now four point five, but last year I was told it was around four point four million ton. So it is growing at eight to ten percent, and plasticizer is not only one plasticizer. There are multiple ten to fifteen type of different different plasticizers, all put together. Okay, and uh, sir, uh, our capacity is seventy five thousand tons, right? Correct. And sir, eight thousand four hundred ton is already uh, for the deal, which we are operating. Okay. And additional to that, sir. Uh, 35,000 then. So, who will be the biggest player in this segment, and what will be their capacity? I think it is KV, and capacity is between 2 lakh to 2 lakh 50 thousand. Then you can check in their website. Uh, okay, sir. Uh, thank you, and all the best. Thank you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Due to time constraint, that would be our last question. I would now like to hand the conference over to the management for closing comments. <laughs> Thank you everyone for joining us today. <clears throat> My voice was not clear because I'm down with the cold. With the cold, we appreciate your time and interest in the company. If you have any further query, feel free to contact our investment solution advisor SB or can directly send the mail to us. 
Okay, good bye. On behalf of IG Petrochemicals Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines.